Whoa, week one is done and the struggle is real. Hopefully that's just the body waking up again, getting used to exercise. Fingers crossed you get all your workouts done, maybe even a race. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me again. But if you're new to this channel, thanks for checking out my little 100 trainer vlog. It's quite busy out this morning, so I'm just gonna walk. I don't really like talking on camera <laughs> around people, but Monday is an easy run, recovery run. I can't remember exactly how they phrased it. And I think also on the plan it said 35 minutes, 40 minutes. But I don't mind as long as it doesn't exceed one hour and I'm pretty sure that's after a conversation I had with Eddie on the Run to the Hills podcast that you know keep your recovery runs under one hour anything above that kind of I suppose becomes something else also we did the first um, strength and conditioning now I just follow a YouTube channel called Fitness Blender and they do loads and loads and loads my goodness me they do so many different workouts and I found a core workout, an upper body workout, and a glutes and thigh workout. And I tweak it a little bit, but fundamentally I just follow along that YouTube video. Now granted, it will not be runner specific, but I don't have the time, the mental or the physical bandwidth to go to a gym and do a proper program. I think if I put that much friction in between me and exercise, Probably wouldn't get it done Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Wow. First proper structured workout of the trainer plan. And it was five times five minutes at threshold pace, threshold effort. I found it tough. Pace for me, like 628 for that uh, effort on a flat surface, sorry. But yeah, first of all, we're fine. Last one. I just couldn't do it. Heart rate was quite elevated, but yeah, I just couldn't do the pace. I was running into the wind, and obviously, you know, I'm coming back from a 100 miler, so there's a lot of recovery needed after that. But I started off the day with a nice, easy jog, run, easy run around the village with Rex. So, yeah, quite a big day actually. I think maybe 13 miles in total, but awesome body does ache a bit afterwards my calves and my hamstrings are definitely feeling it after the workout but yeah awesome to get it done feeling a little bit deflated I've got to admit um, that I couldn't hit those paces but try not to dwell on that and moving on 
I'm a bit naughty really because Wednesday on the training plan was a blank day, rest day. But I did the classic five mile loop with Rex around the village. Super easy, so that was nice. And I walked Rex uh, three miles or something later in the day. So lots of movement, but nothing too heavy. It's been a super busy week for the podcast so far. Monday, well, we recorded the show. Tuesday, we had a chat with Ali Bailey, who won this year's Lakeland 100, so that was a treat. And then yesterday, we were joined by Mark Lathway. That was a real scoop for us, because this week, the ballot for the Lakeland 100 opens too. So it's been a real feast. Um, Lakeland 100, we also recorded a chat with Emma Stewart, who was the first lady this year's Lakeland 100. So yeah, three great interviews coming up. Thursday is uh, TTT, the way it is. Thirsty Thursday, um, which is awesome. It's basically our group training session, and it was a fart lick, about 40 minutes. And to keep it really simple, we just go hard up the hills and jog everything in between. Go for a beer, or I had a coffee afterwards and just have a catch up, it's great. Also on Thursday, we just started the day off with the classic easy run around the village with Rex, and that's always a treat. But yeah, my left knee, your right knee as you look nice. Does it look any different as I'm walking? As I'm standing. I see like a little, well here it's swollen. It's only low grade pain to be honest. Friday was super easy, two runs, but just one commute. And that was nice to end the working week with two easy runs. Saturday was great, did a park run. Saturday, on the plan it was threshold run, 15 minutes warm up, 15 minutes in threshold, 15 minutes cool down. Um, but some friends of mine's Melanie and Ian, it was their 50th park run. So Ray and I popped up to see them and we did the Leasers Park Park Run in Newcastle, overshadowed by St James's Park. So for me, it's not the best place to go and run. But yeah, awesome. Who doesn't love a park run? But what I did do in the afternoon, because we got there late and I didn't have a warm up, I went out for five miles with Rex, super easy. I did my upper body workout too on Saturday, which was good. Just kept putting that back, putting that back all week and it was hanging over me this second workout that I didn't do. But yeah, getting it done on Saturday was awesome. Oh, thanks so much for keep watching all the way in. That's uh, really awesome. But if you want to see more vlogs, training vlogs, then click on one of the links above to end the week. Sunday long run. Rex and I did what uh, I class as my kind of classic coastal loop. It's down the old railway lines, off that way. Then you run up the coast. And then you run up to the nature reserve, Castle Aiden Dean. It's lovely, it's just got a bit of everything. Hills, lovely buffed out trails with the railway lines, and then the coastal views. Uh, amazing, so yeah, Rex and I love that. Heart rate's on too. So yeah, cruisy miles with Rex, that was great. And then the last workout of the week, glutes and thighs, about 40 minutes. Uh, hamstrings, calves, inner and outer thighs. I quite like this workout. But yeah, got it done. Awesome. Big tick. Didn't like leaving until Sunday. But yeah, it's all done. In the bank. Yeah, on Sunday, as long as the strength and conditioning, I did a bit of rehab too. Spent a good bit of time icing my knee and surprise, surprise, feels loads better. So yeah carry on with that that's one thing to put on my to-do list keep icing the knee it was brilliant to get all of the workouts done three quality sessions the fart leg five times five minutes and the threshold run plus the long run too awesome got all of my strength and conditioning done too other oh, bare minimum i do like to do more than three but i got three done so that was good i have to admit i was a bit down on the dumps about not hitting the paces that i hoped i could i once did Hopefully, fingers crossed, some point in the future, I'll be able to run those times again for workouts. 
but I just can't stress about it. Can't do anything about it. Going forward, I've just got to be consistent, keep showing up, and I just think the rest will take care of itself. So that's it for all the workouts, but if you love the numbers, the elevation, the miles, total, time on feet, etc., then stick around because all of the number crunching is coming up. I'm gonna to have to walk for this because there's a bit of information I need to remember. But yeah, totals and first up is total miles. And that was just over 70. That is the total for the week. So that will include running and walking. So yeah, if you're looking out on Strava and maybe Strava says 65 miles ran, then yeah, don't call me out. It's the totals of the week. Total elevation for the week was around four and a half thousand feet. Now, previously I would be obsessed with being in the 10,000 feet range. I'm not too sure why. I've picked that up from somewhere and I've held onto it tightly. When it is closer to the legal 100, maybe 2023, I will be trying to hit that 10,000 feet a week, being more specific on my runs. But definitely for the rest of 2022, I will not be paying much attention at all to what the elevation is because my goal race is the Tudor Hill Velen, which has got some serious elevation but it's not a massive event. Total exercise time for the week was 15 hours. Going forward, I will be building that up to 20 hours plus per week. But again, because the race I'm doing isn't enormous, if I don't get it every week, then that is fine. Weight for the week was 128.6 pounds. Now that was a big drop from the previous week, but I don't look at highs or lows i look at the trend and i think if memory is right thursday evening i had a huge celebration curry with the family so yeah definitely <laughs> um that would have skewed the scales what i do when it comes to weighing myself and body fat monitoring i will keep the time of day and day consistent so although the scales might be inaccurate um, but at least it keeps that side of things consistent. Talking about being inaccurate, body fat. Now on the scales it had me down is 13.7, but I keep reading that these body fat monitors are so inaccurate. So what I'll do again, I'll keep it consistent. I will jump on the scales first thing Friday morning before I've had any breakfast, drinks or anything like that. So at least my side of the deal is consistent. And although all the scales might be wrong, Hopefully they're consistently wrong. So I will just follow the line trend as opposed to the physical numbers itself. But for what it's worth, yeah, 13.7 body fat for this week. Sleep score. It is a mystery to me how Garmin work this out. I get, you know, if you're motionless, then that's a good indication. And maybe it knows that uh, it sees a pattern of your activity when you're going to bed and stuff like that. But how it separates the deep sleep from the REM and that kind of stuff, I don't not know. So yeah, if anybody from Garmin is watching and can shed some light on that for me and the people who are watching this video in the comments below, that would be awesome. I love it. But yeah, for what it's worth again, I was an average of about eight hours a night over the seven days and the sleep score that Garmin was giving me back was good and fair. I think one fair day, the rest of it was good. So yeah, on paper, how they do it, I don't know. But on paper at least, a good week of sleep. So that's the training done for week one. I've got to say, I'm super chuffed. Three quality workouts and a long run and all my strength and condition. Sleep score was good. One negative, like I could say, wasn't hitting the paces I'd hoped for. But one thing, one negative thing, I suppose, from how I'm perceiving things, shouldn't spoil what has been a really good and consistent week. Let me know your training week, how you guys got on. I loved it. I was so blown away with all the comments from last week's vlog. So yeah, reach out again. Let me know what you're up to and how your week went. Oh, thanks again for popping back and watching the vlog. And if you're new to the vlog, then thanks for checking us out. And also, if you've stuck to the end, to the bitter end of the vlog, then yeah, massive thumbs up. And why not give it a like, share, and possibly, please, 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 subscribe to the channel. All the content is running related, so fingers crossed there's something of interest for you. Thanks again for watching. Fingers crossed you all get your training done and have a great week. Take care, everyone. See you all soon.